All right, Kobe. Welcome in. Now, all of a sudden, now you go from I think the outside the program. The, the idea is that now you're the ace. So, what does that entail in the receiving core? Could you repeat that? Can you? What the outside the program is? You're now considered the number one guy yes, sir. in the receiving core. Yes, sir. What does that mean for you in terms of like you're working with the guys in the receiving core, working with KJ and all that? I mean, that basically means to me. Besides, like, the playing part, being the leader for the younger guys and just setting the example every day, coming to work every day, being consistent day in, day out, making my plays when they're, when the when the time presents itself and just being a big-time leader is basically what being wide receiver one means to me far as, like, off the field because my ability will prove itself just it's just God-given. So if I feel like if I lead other guys and just be selfless and just put my team first, God going to bless me with them all the stats and all the everything else that come with being receiver one. Give me an example of what of what that is, like when you're working, when you're doing workouts or something. When we're working out, I just encourage the guys, and like if I see a small detail, like coaches give me, Coach Harris and Coach Mazzon give me the leeway to be able to coach up the guys, so it takes a little pressure off them because I'm an older guy, I'm a fifth year vet, so it just takes a lot of pressure off the coaches because I coach a lot of guys up, you feel me, and I know the exact thing to do, the exact way to do it, and the exact way Coach Malzahn and Coach Harris want them to do it. So I just take a lot of pressure off those guys and just help the young guys out and just being there for them. What's it like working with Coach Harris? It's, it's great. Coach Harris is a great person. He's a confident person, and he's brutally honest. So if you had a good day, it's a good day. If you didn't have a good day, it's either a good day or a bad day in our room. So we don't have in-between days. If it's okay day, it's not a good day. It's not good enough. So we just... The expectations are high, and we just set a high standard for ourselves. And I feel like the last three days we got better every day. So we're just gonna keep coming to work. How about working with KJ and getting him used to being here? I mean, he's experienced, but he's new here. Yeah. Um, KJ is a a great leader, is a great person, is a great football player. He's just a great person to be around, and he's not. You know how some quarterbacks might just be like a Hollywood type person. No, KJ talks to everybody. He hangs around with everybody. He eats at the lunch table with everybody. He's just a great person to be around, and like. I only been knowing KJ for six months, and I feel like he's been my quarterback forever. So KJ Jefferson is a great piece to UCF, and not just only just for football, just being another older guy around, another vet, just so guys can just soak up everything that he's learned, and just he's just a great guy to be around. How strong is his arm when you catch a pass from him? Uh, KJ really doesn't throw the ball hard. He's not a hard thrower. He more of a touch guy. He put good touch on it, so it's an easier ball to catch is what receivers like. But deep ball like he'll put it in the lights you feel me he'll put it far and when he need to throw it a, a missile he can throw it but he's not a real just hard thrower but he, he's a great thrower you guys were a couple points away from nine wins last year instead of six just how hungry you guys are in year two of the big 12 to win some of those close games and have a much better season um this summer we've just been working on finishing like we instead of fourth quarter we do our fist up like when people doing the fourth quarter instead of fourth quarter we do fist up that stands for fast and tense strong and tough so we did conditioning, we do quarters, like first quarter, second quarter, third quarter, fourth quarter, the hardest. So we just been focusing on finishing in the fourth quarter and just pushing through. Like when, when things not going our way or when we're tired, we're exhausted, we just look to our teammates and just know that those are the guys that count on us. So we just got to push through. So I feel like this year will be different because like we've been taking a different approach from day one. So it's going to be a lot better than what we did last year. We've seen a, a, a fiery Gus Malzahn early in, in fall camp. Have you seen that as well, that he's – he seems like he's hungry to, to erase last year as well. Yeah, coach, coach is. We all had that. We all had that bad taste in our mouth after last year, knowing we could have did better, and even the year before, losing the championship in the AAC. So we just feel like it's time for us to, you feel me, just be who everybody seeing us as as out to be, and just prove everybody wrong, and just come out and just be better every every game, and just doing whatever it takes to win, no matter what it is. When you, when you look back at that, that first season Big 12, everyone's kind of talked about the finishing aspect. Well, what is what is kind of the big lesson from that first year in Big 12 that you guys have carried over? To I mean, first fourth quarter, that's all it is. Second half of football, like, we always come out, we, we can play with anybody, I feel like, in the country, but it's just the fourth quarter when, like, the turnovers are small details, eliminating more turnovers, eliminating penalties, eliminating, like, self-destroying plays and just stuff like we can control like eliminate every, don't beat ourselves that's our problem like if we eliminate beating ourselves and just do everything that we can do in our power just give like we should have even odds like we can, we can, we can compete with anybody in the country so we just can't beat ourselves my main thing this year
when you look at this receiver, it's obviously a, a really, a really kind of deep receiver. Group. How does that? How does that help you, help you guys? Obviously, it gives a quarterback more weapons. It kind of spreads the defense out. But how, how does what, what does a deep receiver group that you guys have? It just give the like it give the defense nightmares. You never know what you're gonna get. You can't get the same thing because this guy has different packages than this guy. So it's just a lot. It's just a blessing to have all those old guys around. And I, I learned things. From, even though I'm an older guy, I learned things from X. I learned things from Chauncey. I learned things from Bader. I learned things from Trent. I learned things from Javarius. I learned things from all the guys. I learned things from Jacoby. It's just a lot of things that you can learn just sitting back and just seeing all the different types of guys that we have. I got a good question for you. Who is the fastest guy on the offense? The fastest guy on the offense yeah. is between Johnny Richardson and Javarius. Javarius Johnson, those are the two. They fly. Both of them are fast guys. Yeah. But how yeah. fast are you compared to? I ain't too far behind. I ain't too far behind. They fast, you know. They elite levels. They elite level sprinters, but I'm a, I'm a pretty fast guy too now. So you're talking like, like they could beat you in the 100, but if it was the 200, nah, they they'll beat me. They, they'll beat me in the 40. In the 40, 40. they quicker than me, but like longer distance, I feel like I feel like I can hold my speed a long time. Okay. I can hold my speed. Okay. So if, so if you guys are in the Olympics, mm -hmm. like you'd give them the edge in the 100, but if it was to say the 400 meters, nah, I'm beating. I'm beating. You go. You're I'm beating. Beat I'm beating. Uh, yeah, I'm being there. Thanks, Kobe. No, of course, you don't run 400.